Welcome to the Hundredfold Journey. We help people step out of religious bondage and into true abundance. We invite you to embark on a journey, a spiritual journey called the Hundredfold. At a Hundredfold, we are a group of people developing new thoughts, habits, and beliefs to understand our true identity, to live our life purpose and experience the abundant life just the way Jesus did. Our mission is to provide support, encouragement, and resources to help you on your journey. The life you are meant to live is closer than you think. The journey is the destination, and your journey starts now. Good morning. Doug Corbett here from The Hundredfold Journey. Thanks for joining us on this Grace Awakening Network program. Appreciate you uh, showing up this morning. We're all here to embark on a journey so that we know your true identity, live your life purpose, and experience true abundance. Because A Hundredfold is about a group of people who are looking to find their true identity, and by doing so, finding God's true identity. So thanks again for joining us this morning. We're continuing in a series called Freedom from Religious Bondage, and Galatians 5.1 tells us it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of bondage uh, and, and slavery. And that's what religion does to us. And in fact, that's what uh, the law does to us as well is that we are yoked uh, with slavery and bondage. So this is just a quick reminder of what we did last week, where we talked about we are one with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They have invited us to join in this union with them. 1 John 4, 17 says, as he is, so I am in this world. And in 1 Peter he, it talks about that we've been given everything that we need for life and godliness and that we're partakers of the divine nature. So this is you. And if you're interested in getting more details behind this, then uh, watch episode two, which was last week's. This is another way that I like to view it, which is this is my true identity, where I am in the middle with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that we are one, and that is I am, right? In the Old Testament, it says that, that God calls himself I am, and I've been, um, I've been invited, I, I'm not invited, I am part of that unity, which uh, with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and that is my true identity. That is who we all are, because we are all right there. We just don't know it. We need to be awakened to it. Another reminder, last week we talked about we are the bride of Christ and how when we understand who we are, um, that we are the bride, is that this will then change the way we think, the way we act, and the way we feel, and then who we are or, you know, our being. And when we, when we accept this for who we are, then it will change everything. So again, this is a reminder of what we talked about last week, that we are the bride of Christ. So we're going to be talking about today is, is our identity, right? And, and the things that hold us back. And in my case, and I know many of you that are watching, um, your identity is wrapped up in religion. So the question is, is what do you believe about yourself based on religious opinions of you? And, uh, I actually have someone on on uh, on the program with me. Uh, her name is Linda. So, Linda, as far as your identity from religion, um, because I know that me, like you, we've been set free from that religious bondage. But as far as back in your day when you were, uh, you felt that religion was the only way. Um, how you know? What did you believe about yourself? Um, I guess I, um, I guess I believed that I was separate and that I wasn't, um, um, I, I just felt like I wasn't really ac accepted 
And it, of course, it was just my own belief. But um, religion just had so many rules that I thought that, oh, yeah, I have to do this. I have to be that. I have to, you know, be good. I have to be kind and I can't sin and I have to repent. And I, you know, and and it just it, it seemed like there was a lot of do's and don'ts. Mm -hmm. And um, but now I just feel so much more freer because I feel like I'm accepted uh, as I am. Yes. And to me, the journey is just becoming more freer every day. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And, and you, like me thought, you know, God was out there somewhere, right? He's up there in heaven and he's looking down upon me, but now we're realizing that he is in us and living life with us, through us, as us. And then, and then we talk about the uh, identity of you and who you are. You know, what do you believe about yourself based on your own opinion of you? And how have you been uh, set free from, from that, uh, Linda? Well, it's interesting because I grew up with a lot of limiting beliefs and I had a lot of fear, you know, as a child. And um, I just didn't understand really you know, who I was. And now as I have been growing and realizing and identifying who I really am, things are just really changing it, my perception. And, um, you know, my, I just feel so much different about the world around me and myself. It's just, it's like, okay, I just feel so much more freer. My identity, you know, has change just because my beliefs, the thoughts and the feelings I had about myself. And so then, as you say in the 10 truths, um, life is a mirror that reflects right back to you what you think and believe. So as I'm learning this, I'm realizing everything that I thought and believe was a lot of fear, a lot of guilt, a lot of negativity, and all of that was just being shown right back to me in my world. And things were just were not changing for me. So as I changed my beliefs and my identity, it's just like there's so, so much more peace and love and joy and happiness that that I'm embodying. And that has that's where I have been. It's like I've put on a, a whole new clothing yeah, or that's right yeah and in corinthians it talks about the old has passed away behold new has come and and to some degree it's it's like the uh, uh the caterpillar and the butterfly right so you went from a caterpillar uh to thinking you were were stuck on the ground if you will and then the uh the butterfly is released and, and is a new beautiful creation and What's interesting is that the identity of you also comes from the way that uh, we've been raised and, you know, the, the thoughts uh, and the, the lifestyle and, and the beliefs of our parents and our friends and society, that that all kind of molds who we are. And we have to break free from that because that's not who we really are. And now we're, we're finding that we can we can create our own new identity through understanding the way that God sees us, the way we were created. So, uh, so yeah, thank, thanks for sharing that. And then identity with God. So what do you believe about yourself based on God's opinion of you? And this one has changed significantly for me because, you know, I'll be sharing this in, in a few minutes here, but, you know, I, I felt that God was again out there and judgmental towards me. Uh, Linda, was that your uh, impression and belief about God as well? Yeah, I, I felt like I wasn't accepted, that I wasn't loved. Yeah. And the truth is, is that I, I've i come to know that I, I'm i very accepted and very loved. Mm -hmm. You know, life is a journey. We make mistakes, but we don't need to live with those mistakes. And we just need to let them go and start to accept who we really are in a foundation of love. Yep. Love is the key for sure. And then the uh, uh, identity in Christ Jesus. And, and this is where that mirror 
uh, was reflected back to all of humanity, was the, the mirror of who Christ was in Jesus, the man Jesus. Because Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Father and I are one. So Jesus is the perfect interpretation of God, God in flesh. So I always thought that, you know, God was the good cop. I'm sorry, God was the bad cop and Jesus was the good cop. And um, uh, Jesus came to take the punishment that God wanted to express on us. But no, if you see in the life of Jesus when he was here, he was nothing but love and compassionate and mercy and acceptance um and and all of that so um so that's where we find our true identity he's our older brother and he expressed god perfectly so now we see god in christ just like we can now see god in us and that uh, we are one with him so identity in christ jesus he was that that mirror for us so then we get to our true identity and our true identity, um, which truth or whose truth are you going to believe, listen to, or pay attention to? The way you answer that determines your life experience. The choice is yours. So we get to choose which identity. Do we want to hear you know, the identity from, uh, from our past and, and from religion and from you know, those that are around us, our friends, our family, whatever, or are we going to pull from the identity that God says we are? So we're going to talk about that in just a minute, but you do have the power to choose which identity you want to pull from. And I don't know about you guys, but I want my identity to come from within uh, of who I am and who God created me to be, which is that bride, right? The bride that we we talked about and being in the center of the, the Trinity. And this is your true identity. First John 4, 17, as he is, so I am in this world. I am one with Christ. I am one with God. There is no separation. And as he is, so I am. There is no difference. Pretty amazing. So, Welcome to your new identity. This is your identity. You've been set free. However, this program, this series that we're in is freedom from religious bondage. So now we're going to talk about what some, not all, but some of the bondage is. And these are the pillars that I struggled with, sin identity, what is repentance, old versus new co co uh, covenant, the Ten Commandments, and Adam versus Jesus. So for the next few weeks, we're going to tear down these pillars that are in the way of our identity. When these are removed, or when we understand them uh, truthfully, um, then we'll be able to see or reveal the true identity within us. So the first one we're going to look at this morning is breaking down religious barriers, the sin barrier, the sin identity. And we'll uh, we'll dig into that in just a second. So first off, I, I really like this this picture because it shows that uh, that religion is basically locking out of uh, locking God behind the door, behind the hundredfold life is on the other side of this door, but religion has put all of these barriers, these locks and these special codes that you have to know, and uh, it's on the other side. So what are we gonna do? So we gotta break down each one of these locks and get through this door, which is on the other side. So this this represented, uh, oh, I'm sorry. So let's, let's talk about sin. Um, so the Greek definition of sin is harmatia, uh, sorry, hamartia, uh, which is called missing the mark. And in Hebrew, it's, it's falling short. So what this means is I always thought in my mind that God was over there somewhere. And then I 
I thought I had me on there, but I'm over here on the right side and I was aiming for God. I was doing all these things. So in my mind, I thought my job was to please God, which I did out of my own strength, right? I'm going to work hard for God. I'm going to, I'm going to be a Bible teacher. I'm going to tithe. I'm going to do all these things. But I was doing that from my own distorted identity because I did not know who I was. So I felt I needed to do things. And in fact, religion enforced that by telling me that it is all about my behavior and sin management, thinking I needed to do something in order to be who I already was. So again, I was working and striving to be pleasing to God, and I always fell short. So sin represents me falling short of who I thought I was. It was my distorted identity. And then knowing that I missed the mark, I would feel guilty and condemned because I knew better. I would think to myself, just do more, pray harder, fast longer, then things would get better. So I felt, you know, this big finger from, from heaven saying, you know, you, it's your fault. And then pulling that, that guilt around. It just uh, was never good enough. Uh, I viewed God as angry, um, just waiting for me to mess up. So this was my perception of God. So Linda, is any of this resonating with you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely something that I think we all feel like, you know, if we're not living the right life, um, you know, we have to do something about it. We have to change or we have to confess or, and then we feel like we we're, you know, we're, we're better than other people and, and we're not, yes. we're just on our own journey of coming into awareness. Yeah. Very true. Yep. Us against them. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I did it. Why didn't you? So yet, despite my guilt and condemnation, I was told to keep doing in order to get closer to God. Pray, witness, confess, all of these things is something that that every, and I'm going to use quotes, air quotes, uh, Christian uh, should be doing or someone that's involved in church. Um, so I just had to do more. So now sin, which Again, my definition is, or, or, or the, the Greek and Hebrew is missing the mark. But even deeper than missing the mark is distorted identity. I did not know who I was. Therefore, I felt I needed to do all of these things. Thinking of myself as less than my true God-given identity and thinking of God as less than his true identity, which is perfect, unconditional love. Right? Because... A God that was unconditional would not be pointing his finger at me. He would be loving me, putting his arms around me. Um, so that kept me in a state of fear and condemnation and separated from God. Those, the result of my sin was I was never good enough in my mind, right? It was in my mind. And Colossians 1.21 talks about the separation that I had in my mind. It had nothing to do with God. It had everything to do with me and the way I was thinking, the way God was thinking about me. So we need to find the sin solution. What is the sin solution? Getting off the roller coaster of performance-based religion and remembering my true identity. And what is my true identity? As he is, so I am in this world. So you don't have to do in order to be who you already are. That is the solution to sin. It's not about sin management. It's not about confessing, repenting, doing more, whatever, whatever. It's about understanding your true identity and then um, realizing you don't have to perform. So the sin solution, um, just to just to kind of make it official, is that uh, the Bible says that we're not under the law anymore. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. We're also not under the old covenant. There's a thing called the new covenant. And that was something that was revealing to me, uh, you know, part of my transformation was understanding there's actually something called the new covenant. Um, and it, it was like, I never heard it before in my 30 years of, of Christian living. And in Hebrews eight, it says that we're under a new covenant and the old, uh, the first is obsolete. 
and 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 it's vanishing away. We're not under Adam anymore. And this was a, a, a life changer for me as well. I thought, okay, I'm just following Adam. You know, I'm just following in his footsteps, making wrong choices. But in Romans 5, it says, for if one man's offense, death reigned, that was Adam, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. It's a gift that's been given to us will reign through the one Christ Jesus. So we're not in Adam, we're in Christ. There's no guilt or condemnation in Romans 8. Therefore, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. When I understand that I am spirit, I am not flesh, I am spirit in a body that's having a physical experience. I'm not the other way around. So there's no condemnation. There's no reason for me to beating beating myself up. And it's not performance-based. Ephesians 2, for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works that anyone should boast. So see that? Not of works. <clears throat> it's not something, excuse me. <clears throat> it's not something that I've done or haven't done. <clears throat> it's completely based on the work that, that God did for me. And I'm not under fear. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. So I used to fear that God would punish me, right? That that finger that would come out of the sky and, and say, you know, you're, you're blowing it. And then guess what? I don't have a sin nature. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old have passed. Behold, new things have come. And that the old that has passed was the, the thought, the fallen mindset, Um of of thinking that I was a dirty rotten sinner and and that I was born in sin but I've been born again in the spirit so no not not under the sin nature so then you go from sin solution to in solution <clears throat> so now we are in the law of the spirit and the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death so I'm now no longer under that old covenant thinking. I'm under the new covenant thinking, which is in the law of spirit. I'm also in the new covenant. And the, the, the it's obsolete, right? The old is obsolete and, and I'm under the new covenant. I'm also in Christ. Uh, Galatians 2.20, I've been crucified with Christ. And it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I live now, I live in the flesh. <clears throat> the, the life I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I am in Christ. I'm also in freedom, Galatians 5. It uh, stand firm then, because, and this is the verse that that uh, is part of the series, because we've been set free, not entangled again by the yoke of bondage. So we've been set free. So I'm in giving spirit. So the first man, Adam, became a life being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. And Christ is in me. Therefore, I'm that life-giving spirit. It's flowing out of me. I'm also in love. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So I'm part of that love now where I see that I can love others because God has loved me. And then the last one, <clears throat> excuse me, is in righteousness. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So I am perfectly righteous, holy, blameless. And so I am in. I am in the Trinity. I am in with God. Christ is in me. We are one. There is a union here. <clears throat> so first john 4 17 right the sin solution and the in solution so linda i know i went through that quickly and for those that are are, are watching i'm sure um any any comments or observations on what i just kind of ripped through there with all of those verses yeah <clears throat> i think we you know the way i understand is jesus came as for us to understand that we are free that we're loved and that it's it's like letting go of the old self and realizing coming into realization of the new self. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
And he was the perfect mirror for us to see who we are through Jesus, who was in Christ. So the thing is, is I had the solution all along. I just didn't know it. It was in me all along because I was in Christ all along. And in Romans, it, 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 it talks about, uh, you know, the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin, which is in my members, wretched man that I am, who will set me free from this body? Thanks be to God through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So he set us free from all of those, those old things, the Old Testament and the sin, you know, in Adam and all of that fallen mindset and the distorted identity of who I thought I was and who I really am is Ephesians 1, is that before the foundation of the world that I was chosen to be holy and blameless in his sight. So we are as holy and perfect as Christ Jesus was. So you don't need religion to tell you who you already are. You know this already. It's it's that still small voice inside you that you ignore. God is in you, with you, for you. He is you because you are one with him. There is no separation. No separation. And on that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you are in me and I in you. Let this day be that day where you realize that you are one with, with Christ and there is no separation. So this is your true identity, that sin, fallen mindset, distorted identity, thinking that you have to do in order to be who you already are, all of that is, is gone. And now you've been set free to live out of your true identity, which is as he is, so I am in this world. So now be who you already are. Um, you don't have to perform. You don't have to you know, just be that bride and just rest in knowing who you are. All right. So hopefully we knock down that, that pillar of sin identity. Uh, next week, we'll talk about repentance and what that truly means. So uh, social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok and, and YouTube. So please reach out. Uh, maybe even join us on Facebook. Uh, and you can always reach out to me uh, through email at the hundredfold journey at gmail.com. And then of course, our website is the same. So that's it for this morning. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining. Linda, thank you for your, your comments and I appreciate your time. And that's it for this morning. And bye for now.